What's up crew, hope you're having a rad day. In this episode, we're doing a bike check on my version three Santa Cruz Bronson. I'm Alan and this is the MTB Alan channel. I'm Alan, this is the MTB Alan channel, and I've been getting requests for a bike check on this Bronson pretty much since the day I got it. But at that time, of course, it was like pretty much stock. I have made some upgrades, formed some opinions on it, so seems like now's a good time to do a bike check. Do you really care, like why? We're gonna do a bike check. I'm gonna give you a general overview of the bike, and then we're gonna talk a little bit about why I chose the bike. We'll go through all the components and stuff like that, as one does in a bike check. And I do get asked a lot what my suspension pressures and clicks and tire pressures, all that kind of stuff, we are gonna go into detail into that, so a lot of you will be happy about that. And then finally, we'll talk about what my next upgrades will be for the bike. Maybe we'll even talk about what my next bike choice might be. Before we get to the bike check though, I wanna announce that I have new merchandise, freshly produced merchandise up on Teespring. You can look down below the video. You should see some links down there for some products. Uh, those are a small sampling of all the products that I have on Teespring. So click on those links. I really uh, been slow to coming up with a product because I felt kind of weird about having uh, people out there wearing a shirt just like kind of with my name on it. It just it felt kind of weird I don't know why it felt weird, but I finally realized I could really just make this about you crew So I took my my standard MTB Allen logo I made an adjustment to it and now it says MTB crew um, And that's just gonna be the logo for the shirt I'm not changing my actual logo, but I figured I would make it so that it's a line of clothing for you crew. So it says MTB crew. Some of them have the air horn logo on the back, which is me going, oh shit, um, with that air horn. So you can check it out. Got all kinds of stuff. Some of the designs are pretty poppy. Some of them are really subtle. I even have like a black on black one, which is actually kind of similar to this Santa Cruz shirt. It does help support the channel, but whether you want to support the channel, whether you're a subscriber or not, you can wear those shirts and just kind of show off that you are part of the MTB community. Really the way I look at it, anybody who shares the stoke of being on a mountain bike is part of the MTB crew. So go check that out, links in the description. All right, let's get to the actual bike check. Overview. So in the Santa Cruz line, if you look at the 27.5 models, the Bronson sits right in between the 5010 and the Nomad. The 5010 is more like a pure trail bike, whereas the Nomad is more of a pure enduro bike. The Bronson kind of takes both from both sides, which for me was perfect. It's been a total brawler on the descents, steep, rocky, chunky, whatever the trail had to throw at it, it handled it just fine, while still being really fun and poppy on the flow trails and the jump lines. Now, it doesn't exactly climb like a goat. It has the new updated VPP system with the lower linkage, and that makes it track a lot better when you're climbing on more chunky terrain, um, but you lose a little bit of pedal efficiency. Although, I guess when you're on fire road, that's kind of really where you're gonna feel that difference, but when you're climbing on single track, I feel like having a more active rear end just kind of works better. In any case, I'm more about it being better on the downhills and that lower linkage is definitely way better when you're descending. So as I said, the Bronson has 27.5 wheels. This frame is the Carbon CC. I'm 5'5", and you get 160 pounds of raw, pure, 100% Allen with me. Uh, so I am on a size medium frame. It has a head tube angle of 65.4 degrees and a respectable seat tube angle, angle? Um, angle of 75.3 degrees and a fork offset of 44 millimeters. Do you really care about that? It's the short offset. Why the Bronson? So why did I choose the Bronson? I wanted something that was gonna be able to handle bike park days and big chunky stuff, but then also handle big long pedals. I wanted to just kind of do it all bike, but something that leaned a little bit more towards being 
uh, confidence inspiring on the descents. Uh, in the Santa Cruz line, that really came down to the Bronson versus the Nomad. So let me back up and make it clear that I did demo a ton of bikes. The Scott Ransom in its 29er configuration, Transition Patrol, Pivot Firebird 27.5, Process 153, the Nomad, the Specialized Stump Jumper Evo, whole bunch of bikes, and I did have some level of fun on all of them. The thing that I found with the Bronson and the Nomad is I would get to the bottom of the trail not thinking about the bike, but just having had a total blast. I'm just like, yeah, I don't even know. That was awesome. And that's really kind of what made the decision for me. I wasn't thinking about how did the linkages work or how does this bike feel? I just was able to ride it and have a blast. Why did I choose the Bronson over the Nomad? The simple reason was that the Nomad hadn't been updated for a while and I think it's due for an update pretty soon, maybe even in 2021, we'll see. But when I bought this Bronson, it had just been updated. So I knew this generation was gonna be around for a while. So that's why I chose the Bronson. All right, let's talk about componentry. The components. So when it comes to suspension, the version three Bronson is a little bit weird because pretty much all of its builds have a rock shocks on the back and Fox in the front. The shock is a rock shock super deluxe RCT with 150 mils of travel. It has low speed compression and high speed rebound settings as well as a lockout switch. Up front, we've got the Fox 36 Performance Elite with that grip to damper. It's got all the clicks. It's got low speed compression, high speed compression, low speed rebound, high speed rebound. You can put air in it, it goes up and down. For the wheels, I went with the Santa Cruz Carbon Reserve with the 30 mil internal width. I have been in love with these wheels. I actually had a set of them on my old Recluse and that was a really good test because nothing else changed other than the wheels and it was a totally different bike. It just felt way more capable. They don't necessarily look that pretty. They do get kind of beat up and dinged up, but in terms of strength and rigidity and flexibility and tracking, freaking solid. I've paired those wheels up with a Minion DHR on the back and an Asagai up front. One little detail here is the PD stem. I love these stems. They're metal on the inside so they don't get clogged up. And if you saw my five tips video, you will know that the cap is actually a valve stem core, valve stem core, valve stem core remover, which is pretty sweet. The drivetrain, train, train, drivetrain, is a SRAM X01, which is uh, 10 to 52. And then I've got a 32 chain ring up front and it's got the X01 carbon cranks. On those cranks, we've got the One Up Components composite pedal. Really dig that pedal. Um, you can get the metal one, which costs a bit more, but I feel like the composite one actually feels just as good as the metal and it doesn't like send rock strikes up into my spine. I don't know, maybe that just is me. One thing that a lot of people don't talk about with pedals is like how well the spindle works in them. In uh, other flat pedals that I've used, they actually had a fair bit of resistance in the spindle, which when you're pedaling for a long time, that actually makes a difference. These pedals, I haven't done anything to them and they just spin just fine. I think that's an important thing about pedals that people don't talk about, but I talk about. All right, to slow me down and sometimes stop me, I've got the SRAM Code RSCs with 200 millimeter rotors up front and 180 millimeter rotors out back. Organic pads in both the front and the back. And yes, I do actually bleed my own SRAM brakes. I kind of look like a surgeon when I'm doing it with the syringes and stuff. I like it. The cockpit. The bar is the Santa Cruz carbon bar. Actually, it had the honor of receiving the first ding on my first crash on the bike. No! No! So that's pretty rad. The stem is the race face turbine R in 35 millimeters. And for the grabbers, I've got the ODI Pro Elite lock-on, Elite Pro lock-on, something like that. Um, yeah. That's what the grips are. 
You may have noticed there's only three tubes coming off of my handlebars, and that's because I have the Access Dropper Seat Post. Uh, I freaking love that thing. In case you're wondering, the battery life is awesome and the batteries are really small and easy to carry. The seat post has 150 millimeters of travel, and on top of that travel is a Spank Uzi 220 seat. I don't know what it is, but there's something about the red bottom of that seat that I just and lastly, you may be wondering what that thing is on my down tube. It's a mount for my Fidlock bottle. It uses magnets to hold it on and then you do a little twist to take it off. It's been pretty bomb proof whether I'm going through a whole bunch of crazy chunky stuff or crashing, it's never come off. Settings and pressures. All right, let's talk suspension and settings. I wanna give you a little bit of background on how I got to where I am now. So when I first got the Bronson, I borrowed two shock whizzes from the Path Bike Shop. Thanks Path for being so rad. And I used that to get a base setting for my suspension. I uh, wrote it a bunch. If you wanna check the video on that, uh, go ahead and check that up in the corner link. Uh, and you can see kind of how I set that up. But I ended up, basically the major thing that I did uh, to update the suspension at that time was add a volume spacer to the fork and the shock. So that made it uh, more playful, more poppy, um, while still kind of maintaining a fair bit of that chunk management. And then a bit later, I had Kevin Aiello uh, as a coach and he totally redid my suspension. And so far I have been in love with the new setup. So let's talk about those pressures and those settings. So out back, I've got 185 pounds of pressure in the shock with 11 clicks of low speed compression and seven clicks of high speed rebound. All right, so in case you were gonna ask this in the comments, seven clicks of high speed rebound means seven clicks from all the way closed. So that means I wound it clockwise until it stopped and then wound it back counterclockwise seven clicks. So if you can ask that in the comments, now you know. And if you're too embarrassed to ask like I have been for a long time, now you know, okay. And in the fork, I've got 66 pounds of pressure with 21 clicks of low speed compression, 19 clicks of high speed compression, six clicks of low speed rebound, and seven clicks of high speed rebound. I have been told that you always wanna keep your high speed compression higher than your low speed compression. Right now I've got it two clicks lower. Uh, somebody let me know in the comments what you think about that. Um, I do, well, I might actually change that. As for the tires, I don't run tire inserts or anything like that. I've yet to really feel the need to do that. As far as the pressures, I usually run about a two pound difference between the back and the front. And the actual pressures really kind of depends on what I'm riding. At the bike park, I will tend to run like 30 and 28 or maybe 32 and 30, just kind of depending on that day. I'll usually kind of feel that out. As far as trail riding, it's pretty much always 28 and 26. Next upgrades. All right, so let's talk upgrades. A really easy one is a new back tire. While I have really been digging the DHR and Asagai combo, I have heard a lot about things like the Dissector and the Aggressor. Actually, if any of you have recommendations, I'd love to hear about it in the comments. Um, some pros and cons of any one of those, or should I just stick with the DHR too? Now, there are two major upgrades that are constantly vying for my attention, and they're kind of on opposite ends of the spectrum. One of those upgrades would be to get some access wireless shifting on this bike, get rid of one cable, have something that's a little bit more rugged and more dependable. That's kind of one option. And the other one is to get the 2021 Fox 38 fork on here for the added stiffness, tracking, and just overall beefiness. Fuck, it's solid beef, baby. Plus it's got those little bleed ports. So freaking cool. Maybe I'd get the orange one, I don't know. Yeah, and they're both kind of in the same price range. So yeah, I don't really know which one I would do first. The next bike. Now, what about what my next bike might be? Honestly, I would love to see what the next generation of Nomad looks like. I haven't seen any hints or any rumors or anything like that, but I do know that, you know, they just kind of tend to make things beefier. Beef, baby. If we look at what happened with the version three Bronson, I want to see what the next version of the Nomad looks like. Looking at the other trends that are happening with Santa Cruz, 
that's what I'd love to see. Um, actually, if you have any suggestions, like you think there's a bike out there that you think I should really try out, do let me know. Maybe I could find a way to demo them or something like that. So that's my bike check. If you dug this video a fraction of the amount that I have dug this bike, hit that like button. Continue to get rad content like this in your feed on a weekly basis by hitting that subscribe button and that notification bell. And if you wanna support the channel, either check out that applaud button or check out my merch. And with that, I'll see you next week.